yeah. this is gonna be a weird podcast because I'm actually not gonna be the host of this episode. My main man Mike to the left of me. Yo, <laughs> they can't see you on the yeah, radio. Yeah, they can hear. <laughs> yeah. um, to the left. Can you hear that? I'm to the left. <laughs> so, so Mike here uh, is a, a, a Buffalo kid, but he's now living in New York City, and uh, you're kind of the genesis of Buffalo Eats. Like you're, you're the reason it kind of started. Basically, I used to be a super picky eater if everyone hasn't already learned. Ellie, really? Yeah, I'm just keep going. I'm just listening. <laughs> and, um, anyways, I was, I was the guy who would only eat chicken fingers, and I was super boring, and no one. Uh, Ellie, you just are just keep super going. distracting. <laughs> Why are you all freaking out? Keep talking. You're easily distracted. We're going to have to edit this. No, you're yeah. fine. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Um, anyway, so I was a super picky eater. Jesus and uh, the only time that I... Or the, how it all started of me trying different foods was we went to your cousin's uh, Greek place in the McKinley Mall. And huh. you made me eat... Best Greek fries in Buffalo. Very good Greek fries. And you made me eat a gyro. Oh. And, I and, and it was literally... It wasn't even something exciting. Like, I wish I could say, yeah. like, he sat me down and I ate raw lamb... Like, that was shaved off by his grandfather. Like, it was literally a euro, which is pretty basic. It's Right. And, and that, the, was, that was at my cousin's place in the McKinley Mall. Um, Cedars. Cedars, yeah. Were yeah. we at Circuit City at the time? Yeah, oh yeah. We were, yeah, we were still at Circuit City, yeah. Oh, okay. Because, uh, yeah, I, I've heard that you give me credit for for kind of getting you started as a, as a foodie, but I never knew why. <laughs> I, I couldn't remember. I was trying to think about it. I'm like, <laughs> I, when did this happen? I remember... Exposing you to anything in particular, it, it was it was like that. It's and, Greek fries, and and the reason I ate that was because more of peer pressure. Like I had no interest in eating that euro, but uh-huh. I think you ordered it for me. Yeah, I'm good at that. I'm <laughs> good at peer pressure. And you just shoved it, and then like your uh, cousin or uncle was just like looking at me as I'm like <laughs> eating it, so just watching. Yeah, it. yeah. Like, no pressure. Just go ahead and enjoy this. So you're okay. That's yeah, all it took. That's I mean, all it took. That's that's okay. something unique. It's different. It's and and I thought and and Pizza like and the sauce fingers. on it, like the tzatziki sauce. Like normally, I would never have even or put that on. Yeah, there. yogurt, garlicky, cucumber. Yeah. I mean, there's not. That's not. I mean, it's not an exciting. Sauce, it's not an exciting food. food. It's not. Uh, you know. Uh, what was it? Anthony Bourdain and his oysters that like opened his eyes. Like this was kind of. Oh right. Okay. This is kind of laundry's done town. Pretty bland. Time but, laundry's done. Anyway, so that started, and then you introduced me to No Reservations, or told me that you were, like, a huge fan of the show, right. and then that, like, just, like, really shoved into my face, the whole, you should eat this because everyone else in the world eats it, and it's delicious, and stop being a pussy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Daddy. That, that's basically been my philosophy, though, right? <laughs> yeah. If, if, uh, if, if a billion people in China are eating chicken feed, then maybe I'm the weird one. Yeah. You know? Although, when we tried chicken feed, I didn't like it. Yeah, it's okay. Well, it's nothing. I'm it was not just all bones. I, I didn't seem like there was enough yeah, meat that, to really. Exactly, exactly. It's mostly skin and cartilage and yeah. bones. Yeah, there's. Well, the there's best just... part of that was watching Doug try to eat it. <laughs> I'll never forget the look on his face. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Thank God we had that like Chinese family that we were sitting with that like really helped us out at that restaurant. Was there? Yeah, yeah. There was like that whole family, and like as carts were going by, like right. they were like pointing, like, "Yeah, you should." You should grab that. We were doing dim sum in uh, in yeah. New York, and that's when they bring the carts around. And you just pull, you know, whatever plates you want off the carts, and it's a lot of different dumplings and rice dishes. Yeah, and, it was good. Yeah, yeah, I liked it. It's a, it's a great brunch item. Yeah. So, so basically, this podcast is going to be you have taken control. Normally, I'm the guy who's asking questions. Right, so I'll be taking control here, and uh, we're <laughs> so let me just take control here, and uh, we'll we'll talk to Donnie. We'll, we'll uh, see, you know, how it started. I, I mean, he's, he got into that a little bit already. Yeah, and um, we'll just get to know the man that that you've been reading all this time. You know, I, th- I think I think you on your on your blog you do you do a really good job of trying to show as much different uh, food in Buffalo as you can, but I think you you don't really talk about yourself much. You don't really go into yeah. your own personal history and stuff. You're, it's you, it's not a memoir. You keep it strictly professional. Yeah, and I mean, I so think we're gonna we expose this man. Who is this? <laughs> Who is the, Mr. Donnie B. Mr. Buffalo eats here? Yeah, I mean, we. I think we have a personal tone to our, our posts. Like everyone, I don't know if everyone, but people know that it's, it's definitely like, friendly. It's it's uh, and I, we use like our names. Like we use Ali and, and right. Donnie, and we use I. It's it's not. I don't know. I mean, we we we've gotten better. At first, it was bad. It's not proper APA style. Yeah, it is not proper, proper APA. APA or MLA. 
Either. Whatever. It is not oh, either of those. Yeah. APAs for yeah, like, yeah. psych people. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, whatever. Basically, like, uh, neither me or Ali are, are trained uh, writers in any sense. Especially not you. Especially not me. And so, basically, the process is normally I write what I think is a coherent uh, blog post, and then <laughs> Eddie, <laughs> and then Ali will... And then Ali spell checks it? Uh, oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Spell check is a... Well, here's the thing is, like, I, I, I write, like, how I think and how I talk. Right. Which is obviously makes sense in my head, but then when she reads it, she's like... I don't think people are going to understand what the hell you're saying. So she comes in and makes it uh, readable, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I usually change about 50%. 50%? Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, but but I, I the whole point of the blog is that it's kind of like a food journal. Mm-hmm. I'm not I'm not like a guy who's a, a, a expert on food or anything like that. I'm never going to be the authenticity police. I'm never going to be the guy who right. is going to tell restaurants how they should make things. Right. Uh, I our think whole, you always come across that way, too. Yeah, and our whole angle is I. you can be a picky eater and then start to enjoy food and eat different things. And uh, and I don't know. I mean, that that's kind of the, the goal of it, is, is just to... To show people that, like, yeah, you can be the guy who eats chicken fingers, but, you know, if you go to an Indian restaurant, there's going to be something for you to enjoy because I enjoyed it and I was you. Like, I don't mm-hmm. know. That That's, I guess, the goal. Totally makes sense. Yeah. Totally makes sense. And it's kind of just gone crazy. Like, if, it was literally just a blog where I could just keep track of the things that we ate and just right. wanted to see pictures. Right. And well, We really like, like to keep track of things. You know, we keep <laughs> spreadsheets of video game <laughs> results, uh, keep lists of places you've been to. So this... This totally fits in with with your style. Yeah, yeah. I, and now I, you've I, just I, been fleshing it out and adding some color to it, and yeah, using, and, yeah, yeah. Like you said, a journal that people can use as a guide to go into all these unique places in Buffalo. Yeah, because there's a ton of them, and most people don't know about them. Yeah, and we, I think we could really do maybe even better about covering more uh, ethnic cuisines and things like that. Sure. I think I think last year we had too many pizzas, pubs. Yeah, pubs and pizzas. Well, I mean, there's a lot of pubs and pizzas in Buffalo. <laughs> I know. Pizza's fine. <laughs> so, so you started out just eating chicken fingers, basically, right? And French fries, pizza. I mean, basically, I, at any restaurant we would go to, I would just get the we equivalent went, of we a went chicken to Fridays sandwich. A lot. Fridays, we, yeah. we did go to Fridays. I'm talking a even lot. before. Before what, me. Even before. Okay, yeah. Childhood. Uh, before, dining, yeah. Right? I mean, well, before Ellie, I mean, I we didn't really. I mean, Tommy can attest this. We very rarely ate at, at restaurants. Pussy right. Wallies. I mean, well, yeah. your mom is an awesome cook. She's she's a very good cook, and and. She's very upset that I've gotten into food after I've moved uh-huh. out of the house and <laughs> and become more uh, adventurous, I guess. So, so would she make these these elaborate dishes and you just wouldn't eat them, or she'd have to kind of not so them much down kind I, of a little for you? She, I mean, she grew up in a, an Irish household, so it, it was very meat and potatoes, and that's kind of like every meal was a, a meat and a starch. Okay, um, so you ate most of your mom's meals. Yeah, okay. and. Uh, Maybe, uh, I mean, she's always been a huge Food Network person in, like, mm-hmm. PBS cooking shows, which is maybe, like, I remember being a kid and, like, watching those with her, like, watching uh, Jacques Papin or, or his name, or Pepin. Pe- Pe- Pepin. I, my French is awful. Yeah, I can't say it. But, P-E-P-I-N. Yes. And I remember, like, Jacques. watching his, like, cooking shows and, and with her when I was, like, you know, it was uh, summer vacation and we were just hanging around. So, like, maybe there's, like, a little part of that that's, like, been underneath the whole time waiting uh-huh. to come out. Okay. But, uh... But yeah, I mean, nothing. Was, I mean, as we got older, she got more adventurous. She started making Mexican things and trying uh, Asian cuisines and things like that. But that wasn't until I had kind of started to become more an adventurous eater. I think. Okay. But yeah, I mean, mo- but mostly like if I ever went out to eat, and even when I we start, I started dating Allie. Uh, like, Fridays. It was it was Fridays. It was a lot of chains. Uh, it was a lot of gym stakeout. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well. Allie was at Canisius, right? There's, no, so there's, nothing, there's nothing wrong with Jim's Steakout. No, there's nothing That was our wrong. first uh, date. It was, it was, was, uh, was Jim Steakout. Our first Chris date Rock. was Jim Steakout and Amvets. And then and later Vets. on at night, uh, Chris Rock. Absolutely perfect. <laughs> that's, that's, that's how he won me over with Jim Steakout and Amvets. Yeah, I'm going to put that on my dating profile. That's how I want... That's what I'm, I'm yeah, Put that on OkCupid. Okay you will blow to, up. Yeah. You'll find, what's that, the fish one? Plenty of fish? <laughs> Plenty of fish, yeah. You Plenty will blow fish. up, sir. Farmers and only. Vets, <laughs> Jim Steakhouse and Chris Rock. <laughs> it's a yeah. company, so, I mean, that should do it. Yeah. So I mean, it really hasn't been until the last three years where Ali and I started going to you know Vietnamese restaurants and Thai right. and, and sushi and things like that. Well, to be fair, I mean, you guys were Ali was at Canisius. You were spending a lot of time there, and Jim Steakhouse was just the place to be. In Upper Deck. 
an upper deck, yeah. So like, it's not like you had a lot of choice around. Which there doesn't even exist anymore. Griffins know uh-huh. what I'm talking about. Do you, Do you Griffin's think a lot of people in Buffalo deck. are just like chicken finger and pizza pizza kind of people? Yes. Oh yeah. Do you think more so in Buffalo than other places? Yes. Ah. Uh, yes. More so in Buffalo than like big cities like New York, Chicago, and things like that. But I mean. That's compared not to like, We're not compare it to yeah, but that's... compared to like other Midwest towns, like I'm sure it's the you exact same, if not same. worse. I think. Why, you, why though? Why? Why is that? That kids just eat it's chicken It's safe. Pizza I don't know, it's just yeah. safe. I mean, it, you grow up with it, and you know you're gonna like it. And I think the biggest like thing that Ellie and I encounter, even when we talk to our friends who are super chain heavy eaters and and not adventurous, is they're always afraid they're gonna order something and it's like a waste of money mm. and like they're gonna hate it and like that was like twenty bucks. So they don't, they don't want to take the the risk. They'd rather minimize the upside. Yeah, they just want to go somewhere, and and people love going somewhere and knowing exactly what they're going to order. Uh-huh. Like I am the complete opposite. I will go to a restaurant and have no idea what I'm going to order, and went until I look at a menu. Uh huh. But like I, th- I find that other people who are super picky like want to know exactly. Like I'm going to go to Fridays. I'm going to get my Jack Daniel's chicken strips. Right. I'm going to spend twenty three dollars total. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to get. This. I know I'm what. Gonna enjoy it this yeah. much. Yeah. I know exactly what the bill is going to be and what it's going to be after. Like mm-hmm. to, and I think like money deals a lot with that, and then I think just the safety of it, just knowing that I'm gonna have a good meal because I'm gonna enjoy it. That's fair. Yeah, I mean, it, and it's hard to try to convince them, like, hey, you should try, you know, anything. I don't know, like, just don't even go to a chain restaurant. Just go to a, a locally owned one that serves basically the exact right. same thing. You're not asking people to eat chicken feet. You're just saying. I just want people instead to, of going to Fridays, go to yeah, whatever. Yeah, go whatever somewhere else that's using the same chicken strips. Exactly, and. Like just go to, I mean, there, there's so many ways you could eat chicken. Like just go to a, a, a Japanese place and get like chicken satay or something like that. Katsu. Or katsu, katsu, or katsu. katsu. Yeah. yeah, katsu. katsu is yeah, pretty much a chicken. I thing. mean, yeah, it's, it's a fried chicken. It's pounded fried chicken on top of rice. Like, uh-huh. is not that scary. No, it's not. No, and but I don't think you have the exposure to that. Right, like growing up, like it's, you know, Buffalo's kind of just a, uh, like, you know, like your upbringing. It's Irish. Or German or <coughs> yeah. Polish or Italian. It's it's meat and potatoes. In the suburbs, dining options are definitely way different than what's in the city. Mm-hmm. And so if you're not growing up in an area where you're right down the street from a place that has sushi or things like that. I mean, well, I guess sushi's kind of becoming chic and whatever now. But like, so if you're not growing normal. up down the street from like a Vietnamese place or Indian or anything like that, you'll have no idea right, about so it. So you're not exposed to it. Yeah. Especially in the South Towns where we grew up. there's Yeah. It's, and, it's pretty... It's it's not a very diverse area. No, I mean it's chains. It's chains everywhere. I mean there's a couple well, of places. I just mean like population wise, like oh god, it's uh, yeah, culturally I mean, it's all, just not diverse. Yeah, Orchard Park's just all white rich it is. people. It's very yeah, white exactly. middle upper middle class. Absolutely, and they have like you know things that they want to eat and sure. I mean I don't know. going to school like if I brought something on pita bread into to <laughs> for lunch, <laughs> the kids just lose their shit. Yeah, it was like it was like ham and cheese. It was the same thing they were eating, but instead it was like rolled in pita bread instead of like on white bread. And I was, I was like, "What is that? Like, that is crazy. Like, what are you eating?" I probably would have been that kid in mil- in elementary school. I used to bring uh, um, uh, it was a hard roll, and all that was in the middle sense. was ketchup. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> so it was a roll with ketchup. That was my lunch. You are. And I actually, kids would say that they were going to call the principal on me because they thought that I was uh, throwing out your meat, throwing out my meat, and eating just the ketchup. Well, other little, kids threatened to call the like yeah, tell yeah, on they, you. Yeah, yeah, they threatened to tell on me because they thought I was like eating something that I wasn't <laughs> supposed to be eating. But like, little did they know that my mom was making me a ketchup sandwich, like a ketchup sandwich. Whatever. We all have our weird things. I was like six. That stopped or before I went to middle school. Before college, that yeah. Before college. <laughs> <laughs> college was also horrible. Like um, going to UB then. Burger so I, I went to UB Quite from two thousand two to uh, December six oh seven. Yeah, oh seven, December of two thousand seven, and like the dining point. options there sucked. It was like yeah, they had Burger Chinese, King, they had Korean, was but they were awful. Yeah, and. And I w- nobody pushed me towards that at the time. Like, uh-huh. I, I wish in retrospect that I should have just... Even if it wasn't great examples of each of those, just to get in there and try something. But, like, now, like, there's a really good Greek place. Um, I've had the, the Korean, actually, since then. It's been pretty good. Um, and, and I sure always liked it. I yeah, thought it was okay. Yeah, and... I mean, I don't know. Like, it just seems there's like... A, there was a Japanese place. Is that still there? Yeah. Like, they opened yeah. that. There's, like, two of them now. Yeah. I mean, last, when I was there last year. There's a Jamba there's, there's Juice? Kinds of stuff. Like, yeah. 
I, I they, they just have I don't know. I when I've gone back they have way better food than I remember. Uh-huh. And and nobody I it, back then I wish I had somebody who's like really this is kind of before you got me into it, but like I was this stupid kid who just went to Burger King cuz I thought like I can have Burger King every day. I mean, this is the greatest fair, thing. That sounds ever. awesome. Yeah, to like <laughs> especially a, at eighteen, that to sounds an eighteen-year-old kid who can get a croissant which in the morning yeah. before oh, class, come back, yeah. and then have a Whopper. Yeah, I was like, I can have Burger King every day of my life if I want. Like, I, I was that kid who was like, I'm out of high school. I, I can make my own decisions. <laughs> I don't know. And then it's stupid, but I don't know. So uh, UB wasn't the food area that it is now. Uh huh. And I was too dumb to even search around and check out, like, the places on Niagara Falls Boulevard or even, you know, a Maple or whatever and try out something that's right down the street. But I was just so... I had no idea about the North Town, so it was well, literally There's just, a lot of diversity at UB, but I think the... It, didn't it seem to be a little clicky? Like, you weren't interacting with... Yeah, the no, I mean, there's no Asian cliques. And no, unless I was forced India into a. Or unless I was forced the into a, a group activity right. and like a management class. Also, we should note that we were commuters, so we had. Yeah, yeah. So we <laughs> that probably had met no effect. one. Yeah, we met nobody. <laughs> we we went to school, drove, lounge, and then drove back to Orchard Park. Watch that awful TV. Yeah. It was huge, but it was like it was like most disgusting. Like clearly couches. a tube. Yeah. The tube was messed up for years. Yeah. Oh yeah, that was the commuter lounge. Yeah. The most disgusting couches that I still would sleep on. Yeah, oh I mean, God. what choice did we have? We slept on them. We took naps on them. You're watching these, like, just, like, dirty people, like, in couples, like, making out and just stuff. And then, like, oh, yeah, yeah, I'll just go right there and I'll just sleep right where they were right. dry and then, humping. Remember there was a table? <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. Where the couple gets out of the study room and you're like, oh, uh... <laughs> <laughs> they don't even have books. <laughs> like, uh. And then there was always that table in the back. Remember, they were like really loud and they're always debating. Yes. Oh my God. The most important issues in the world because they oh. had to figure it out. Remember? And they always, one of them was always playing um, like some type of like Japanese manga or like anime or something. <laughs> right, like he was too cool. Like he wasn't paying attention, but yeah. he was there just playing. Yeah. Like, There's always anime um, and probably World of Warcraft. Wow. Yeah. You be. Anyway, so, I mean, that could have been a great jumping point for me. That could have been if I had met, like, some cool Japanese kid or Korean kid, and they like, would have, like, took me to a restaurant. Stuff, like, yeah. Puffalo Weeds could have literally started eight years before it really did, but I don't know. It, it just I was I was sheltered, and I, I didn't want to try anything. Well, before Buffalo Eats, you, you actually started blogging. You were, you were doing Bizzle Brothers. <laughs> Donnie Bizzle and Tommy Bizzle. <laughs> yeah, the, Tom, the my brother, Brothers. who's uh, the producer of these podcasts, yeah. Uh, I mean, that's, I guess, actually how Buffalo Eats started, was all I would do was take a picture of something we ate, and at the time, Ellie thought it was, like, the weirdest thing ever. Uh-huh. Yeah, anyway, so I, I brought this little Panasonic, and I would take pictures, and all, I wouldn't even, I'd literally give the name of the entree and what it was. I would not give any critique... And Anything. it was just a, like a, like almost not a guest post, but like a just a special type of post on this blog that you used yeah, to yeah. do. Yeah, we didn't even call it food porn. I remember I just said all it was was I remember the first one. It was at Ellicottville Brewing Company. Oh yeah, and, the, and I took and a the, picture of the their pulled pork potato. Their skins. pulled yeah pulled pork Those potato. Oh really? Skins. Yeah. Are there you go, delicious. folks. There it is. <laughs> and the I, first ever. I remember I brought my camera in. Ellie thought I was like Brewing Company. It was, you were kind of embarrassed that I was taking I was a picture. Pretty, I'm pretty, pretty embarrassed. Yeah. And well, at the time, that probably wasn't normal. Like, no. nowadays, like, every, you know, it's like a photo shoot at every yeah. restaurant. I mean, like, when we, when it. I was talking to, to Janice Oka. I would have been, oh, yeah, the sure. Other, the other day. Uh, no, you know. No I was talking to my no friend Janice. Sure, NBD. Janice, NBD. Sure. NBD. Janny. When Janice came over to the house and we were just talking like Jane. we normally do, I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, we were talking about how she, uh, when she would hang out with other food writers or food editors from the, na- like, all around the the country, they'd go to dinners and they'd actually bring like SLRs with film and they'd uh-huh. take pictures and, they, and that was like crazy. Like nobody did that. But like I was telling her like we are pretty anonymous still because every restaurant has kids taking pictures of their food with their iPhone. So you just blend in with the, with yeah. the crowd. I mean, I don't think we're like faces or anything. No, I don't no think our... No one really our, notices. Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, you don't put your in, face on the blog either really. So No, but I've done... I mean, we have videos, videos on this videos on Easily find what we yeah. look like though. I've been, uh, you know, I've... You know, I've been WGRZ. judges for several big events. I was on Channel 2 last month. I mean, oh, okay, I, my face okay, is out there. Okay, all right. <laughs> but, I mean... But, no, I mean, we just blend in. Every You look on Instagram, and literally two-thirds of the pictures are food. Or Marty. Mm, interesting. Well, I meant in oh, general. No, I'm kidding. Yes. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> Everyone <laughs> on Instagram is taking pictures of your Everyone dog. knows Marty. Weird. Yeah, yeah. 
but so yeah i mean that that's the benefit is we we kind of blend in and thank god the iphone has a, a sick camera because right. i don't need to bring an slr so back then it was just a once in a while thing hey we're out to eat let's add yeah. this to our blog and your blog yeah. mostly focused on what music it was so it was not very great. music fo- it was all over Do the people place. know what uh how much how into I think music you are i had some guests post in that blog <laughs> where i reviewed viva pinata mm-hmm and Toji Monero, the, the uh, Xbox the, 360 game, Viva Pinata, and, yes. and Toji Monero, the one for Xbox. The show is- notes on this podcast gonna be the weirdest show notes we've ever had. <laughs> but no, so it was like video games, it was music, it was uh, albums, it was beer. Was beer on there? Nope, no, nope. no, uh, not yet. Not yet. Uh, maybe the wall of beer when I started building can we, that. Can we my- talk about beer for a minute? I don't do. I don't think that comes through enough in your in your blog. Is how into beer you you are no, you were like especially. Mm-hmm. I mean you you are my go to beer guy. I think you know more about beer than most people I know. Um, well, I, I appreciate that. Thank you. Well, I you know what though I know about beer without really knowing about beer. Like I could tell what does you, that mean? I could tell you breweries and I can tell you types of ales and I could tell you like oh, this is gonna be a lighter beer or a darker beer. But like, is if you like, ask me, like, so how do you make a beer? Or, uh, how do you make a beer? You, how do you how do you brew beer? I would be like, you did that before. Though. There's water brewed. and stuff. And uh, you, you did homebrew before. Though. We did homebrew, but it was like uh, it's called a Mister Beer Kit, and it is it literally cuts out eighty percent of the work, and then just gives you this like can that uh-huh. you like let ferment in your closet. Like it literally does like <laughs> so much of it for you. Okay, and then you're just like add flavoring and whatever you want. All right, so you're, so you're not a master brewer. But <laughs> I'm not you, a master brewer, but you I, knew a lot of breweries. You knew different yeah. types of beer. You would uh, you know, I I think you got me into beer the way I got you into food. I used to go over your your house and we'd hang out, have play some video games, and yeah, play like, Wii when it was still fun. Yeah, exactly. When, <laughs> when Wii bowling was still cool. Mm-hmm. And um, that was a good six some months. NHL. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Or FIFA. Ah, uh, FIFA. Uh-huh. And but, uh, yeah, you introduced me to all kinds of flavors of beer. And before that, I think I only knew. I thought I hated beer because I only knew Labatt and Blue Moon. And oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So exactly, exactly. So we we thought, or I thought, I discovered. I'm like, oh, like I, I, this is Blue Moon. Like this is a micro. Yeah, yeah. Like I thought I I found like I actually remember the first time I had Blue Moon. Uh, we went downtown. No, and um. Uh, we went to Darcy McGee's, oh, man. and it was when oh, Eric, our, our buddy Eric, we used to have the hookup yeah, there yeah, on Thursdays, yeah. and then we go upstairs. To, yeah, and when we went there, uh, they had Blue Moon on tap, and it was, it was either you or Eric or Doug. You, you guys got to try this, like Blue Moon. Right, like, this is a really cool beer. Right, nobody knows about <laughs> yeah, it. It's yeah, yeah, no one knows about it. At yeah, all. literally, it's not we know it's, it's Coors. Yeah, underneath Coors Field. Right. Yeah, so that all started because I worked at Consumers for a summer. And I did not like beer before I worked at Consumers. Like, uh-huh. I'd drink a Molson, but I think my go-to drink downtown was, like, a 7 and 7 or oh something God, like that. Sure, whatever goes down. <laughs> yeah. I just remember liking something, like, 7 and se- I don't know. But um, I met a, uh, a couple kids there who, like, loved beer. And so we started a beer club, and, like, literally every payday, so every other, every two weeks, all of us would buy a six-pack, and then we'd all switch it out. And so we literally went through... I mean, at the time, I was putting every empty bottle on my wall in my bedroom. Mm-hmm. I think I like maxed That's out right, around. You had a hundred and I think I maxed out at, at three hundred before. Oh, wow, I was in yeah. Close. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, before I actually like took them all down and returned them and stuff like that. But I mean, that, I guess that was kind of before getting into food. I, I really liked beer, but like again, it was just like I like drinking these breweries and these flavors. So, what do you, do you have any favorites? <sighs> How about a favorite? Okay, for let's like, do I still a favorite love, style of beer, like uh, I mean, hard it, cider, hard cider, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Ellie will hard, always hard be hard cider. I um, really love hard cider. Uh, probably, I mean, I always like lighter beers, so probably like a Hefeweizen. Like, okay, those are always like my so, my favorites. Like, or, maybe, or maybe we should go like seasonal. You know, it's summer, so yeah. maybe something light like Hefeweizen. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm a, I'm a summer beer guy. Like, I could drink okay. summer beers year round. Yeah, like I when it gets totally a little colder. Agree. uh I could have like a nice like uh, porter, probably uh, something like Edmund Fitzgerald's. Yes. Uh, what the hell? Yeah, a Great Lakes Edmund Fitzgerald. That's probably like my favorite cold weather beer. Mm-hmm. But otherwise, uh, I was a huge Ho Garden or Who Garden fan. Um, and then the one you introduced me to, the the classic Hefeweizen, the 
what wines the have uh, was oh the, the guy with the with the monk the on the monk it? on it yeah with the gold come on you know the name of it no I don't uh, Hessen uh, Weins the hyphen Weins the let's, let's spend the rest yeah. of this podcast I'll try <laughs> yeah. to get this right ready Weins yeah. the yeah uh, the one with the no, gold stuff on her or something Weins stuff uh, I got nothing yeah I'm not gonna even try but yeah it's the one with the gold like yep, uh, wrapper the and uh, the, the one. yeah and the monk on it yeah that that one, that's a really good beer yeah that's one of my favorites too yeah well now your beer is uh, delirium tremens isn't it that's probably my my top. Yeah, uh, yeah. You just can never go wrong with that, and it's so strong. You only need like one or two. Yeah, and three three gets you. <laughs> three, three is good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, do you have a favorite like um, brewery? Uh, I mean, Dogfish Head. Yeah, I, 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 I don't think you there. can ever go wrong. I, their chicory stout is ridiculous. I love the anything they do is so good. Yeah, it's so cool, so creative. Yeah. So yeah, I mean that that's the one like. If I don't know anything that's in front of me, I'll, I'll just go for Dogfish Head. But, yeah. And, and and you know what? I mean, in recent years, like, as we've lived in Allentown, and it is so cheap to just drink PBR. Oh, there it is. The last, the last <laughs> two years, I've been slacking, yeah. and I've been the guy who orders the cheapest beer just to drink as much as possible. And is that typically PBR? It's always t- PBR, yeah. Would you rather have a PBR over a Labatt? Every day. Oh my God. Me too. I hate Labatt so much. Would you say that the number one thing that annoys you about running into or hanging out with expats in New York City is their missing of uh, Labatt? Yes. Anybody who puts on their Facebook uh, yeah. interests or likes mm-hmm. uh, is Labatt blue. Labatt blue. Drives me absolutely insane. Or I miss I miss Labatt in Buffalo. It, it's yeah. just, it's awful. I'm sorry. It sucks. I, I love all the expats in New York. I hang out with mostly expats in New York. <laughs> Buffalo expats. Um, but I... I can't get behind you on Labatt. I can't either. There's nothing special about it compared to any other macro beer. And it just makes me think of everybody in high school that was like, oh, I love Labatt so much. Like, did you really? Did you really love Labatt? <laughs> Are you sure? Yeah, I mean, beer was like my first obsession. Uh-huh. And then I kind of I kind of literally turned it well, off. Well, actually, I would to- say music is your first. Yeah, I mean, I have an obsessive thing where I get super focused in anything, and I'm mm-hmm. shocked that I've been this interested in food as long as i have but Ellie, we born you I'm well now you're, you're in it for the long haul man well, you, beer is you're kind our... of not my thing yeah beer is not your thing yeah it's no not it's not but it's yeah not. i mean I'm, I'm surprised i've done it like three and a half years like i thought i'd be sick of it and part part of me you know it gets old every now and then i mean if you go to a crappy restaurant i have no urge to write about it yeah and i mean not even if it's like really bad like yeah that's fine but like I, like we just have like mediocre meals sometimes, and it's like, ugh. why did I bother? Why didn't I just go somewhere else yeah, yeah. Where, that I know I like? Yeah, yeah and you, you've that, talked about that a bunch of times. That's kind of the yeah. We talk about the Alan Bedenko and Janice. Like yep. yeah, it, the it's, curse of the food blogger. It is, I guess. But I mean, uh, we get invited to so many cool things now, and I've met like literally everyone, yeah, probably a hundred people that I I can consider awesome. like friends now, and who are really cool people who I never thought like that would ever be the outcome of this yeah let's talk about that for a second i mean as I, this went from a hobby to something that still i mean it's still a hobby, a hobby. you're not yeah. making any money yeah it, there's but, no money <laughs> but uh we make no money you you have all this exposure and access to to this local food scene yeah um i mean you you've interviewed andre reed i remember <laughs> that was that was how was that future hall of Famer. future, future hall, of famer. hall of famer andre reed he was really nice this is the year <clears throat> by the way yeah, I hope so. But no, he was really nice. Like, that was something... It was at the Chicken Wing Fest, right? I believe he was promoting his, mm-hmm. his new sauce. Yeah, I, uh, I you literally... got chosen to interview him. Yeah, I literally... That was all Twitter. Like, Twitter is huge. Like, that's how we meet probably 80% of the people we mm-hmm. meet, is either Twitter or Facebook. And I just sent him a uh, direct message, because I noticed he was following me on Twitter, and so I just sent him a message, like, hey... Oh, you, you sent him a message to yeah, ask him. Well, okay. I, I didn't even want to thought... interview him for that i just was like hey do you want to do like a little article on my site about your sauce and then he sent a thing saying yeah i'm gonna be at the wing fest are you gonna be there and we were filming a video so i was like yeah i'll be there do you want to shoot a quick five minute video interview and yeah the rest i mean is history. the rest is, the rest is history. history the rest is internet gold yeah. that's what i like to call it perfect and you interviewed was it at the same wing fest the uh, was Joey, it Joey Chestnut? Year, the, year previous year. the previous oh, year. Oh, it was the previous year. That Joey one was Chestnut. cool because Pepto Bismol emailed me. And <laughs> that's said, awesome. And <laughs> that's something you only I'm get. Sponsored by Pepto. I've gotten know how you get super that. cool emails, like inbox emails. Like I've gotten one from Pepto Bismol okay. saying, "Would you like to talk to Joey?" Of course, 
Is it Joey? Yeah, it's Joey. It's Joey Chestnut, right. Did you have to bring up Pepto-Bismol sometime in the interview? Yeah. No, he did. He did. Oh, he did. Oh, he had to he bring definitely up. did. How do you bring own. up Pepto-Bismol in an interview? He said he... In, like, he, a normal way that doesn't have to it. talk about, like, how, how bad... I think I meant... Th- your... See, this is before we were doing videos at Buffalo.com, so I literally had to, like, write all this down. Like, uh-huh. I do So, I don't remember the exacts, but I remember he, I said something about if he felt confident going into the wing challenge, and he said... I have a great sponsor in Pepto Bismol who will help me get ready. Okay, who, help, who provide Smooth. me? The, the man's a pro. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, and so yeah, he like snuck it into the conversation at least twice. I don't think I wrote it in the piece that we wrote, but yeah. That's so I've got, and then I've also had a Travel Channel send me an email. What, what did they? What? what yeah. What's uh, that when about? Man versus Food went to Grand Island in uh, Lewiston and things oh, they like went that. to they went to Riverstone. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't really Buffalo. It was kind of vaguely Western New York, Niagara Falls. But they sent me a thing like, hey, would you like to uh, watch the episode early and write a preview post about it? So, I got so to... you watched the Man vs. Field episode before it ca- premiered, before yeah, it came out? Yeah, like a week early, yeah. And what what was the challenge at, the, at that one? That one, actually, the challenge was in Niagara Falls, uh, Ontario. It was like some... Uh, Italian restaurant and he had to yeah. eat like yeah it was lame I don't yeah I, I mean it was okay it okay. just looked like red sauce like challenge like he had yeah. to eat like spaghetti and like stuff like that it, it wasn't that exciting speaking of man versus food you kind of tried to do your own little man versus food <laughs> yeah that was a uh, we're kind of still doing it I guess um, so one of the guys that we had is a Buffalo foodie which is like our little interview a local right. not even celebrity but just somebody who's doing something. Uh, and we just asked him what they like in food. This this guy Phil I met, and why was he a Buffalo foodie? Because he Phil? runs a um, black and blue and gold. Phil Nightinger is his. What's name. black and blue and gold? It's like a Sabres blog. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. sure. I've I mean, there's a lot of, of Sabres blog, but his. Oh, he runs. His, I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay. So I uh, I reached out to him. I was like, hey, do you want to do a foodie article? He said, sure. I've ran into him a couple of times at like events, and uh, I think that night I ran into him at a concert, and he's like. I had the idea. I was like, we should do something like Man vs. Food. Like, I, I, on our own, we found like 10 were you, challenges. Were you drunk at the time? Yeah. <laughs> no, but I think this <laughs> actually started I on. think it started because we wanted Tommy to eat 40 chicken nuggets. We, That's wanted, how it, we wanted him to eat the family pack at McDonald's. Oh, I know somebody who's, who's done that. Yeah. That's a kind so of way you're started. better off. But, so uh, if you do that, that. Tom. But so that didn't happen. And then he wanted to do these challenges. He thought it would be fun. And then we were like, well, I, I kind of have some connections at buffalo.com. Like, they might want to film this okay that's kind of that's, that's how uh, what did you call it again hungry hungry buffaloes hungry hungry, hungry, hungry buffaloes. buffaloes yeah my idea I'll take it every I time. like it I like the hungry hungry hippo reference yeah I I don't know it literally was just me just like like fine just hungry hungry buffaloes right. like we were getting to like the point where we are gonna actually record an episode and, and, like, and you're still doing it Nope. Uh, it's kind of like retired right now. Yeah. Uh, Phil it's moved. on hiatus. It's on hiatus. It's, it, I think it's a tough thing to do. I mean, Man vs. Food pretty much did it, and how many episodes of Man vs. Food can you really watch? Yeah, and he had to like stop because and of he like gained like a million. Pounds. Yeah, he had to like doctors <laughs> really? forced him to <laughs> he stop. He was like going to die of a heart attack. I had to stop watching it because it was boring. <laughs> that too. <laughs> well, there's only <laughs> the so many times you can see him eat a hot chicken wing. <laughs> right, like okay, you ate a lot a of lot. food. Next episode, all right, you're going to eat a lot of food. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh wait, wait, is he going to eat a lot of? Food? Yeah. Like, it's, yeah. I got it. Got I think it. most people just watched because they couldn't believe that those challenges were in Buffalo. Like, they mm. didn't know that that was here. I, I still think a lot of people don't realize, like, there's, like, ten challenges. Like, if you really love to eat, like, you could do some... Oh, you food. mean, like, local restaurants mm-hmm. in Buffalo that yeah, will yeah. do a challenge, like, free t-shirt if you can yeah, yeah. Finish, or your, your name picture, on the wall, yeah, or yeah. a picture on the wall if yeah. you can finish this? So, I, I think that was... Are there like, any that you would want to attempt? No, I don't Just for your own personal satisfaction? No, no. I can't eat. I like that. I think Johnny's seat... Johnny C's had one. Johnny C's has two. They have a. They have one where you have to eat everything on the on the menu. But and that's you can do not that in over a time. Si- yeah, you right. just and that's also on an honor. It's system. like a punch card type of thing. No, no, it's an honor. Oh, you just straight up tell them that you well, did then it. Then that's just lame. <laughs> but then the, <laughs> the other, other one is, is yeah, it's like five it's like, pounds of meat. Yeah, it's like p- an obscene amount of roast roast beef or pastrami and corned beef. There's and three beef. Swiss cheese yeah. and yeah, and rye bread and. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, yeah. But those are super annoying because they just pile all that meat and then there's like two slices. Right. So they pretend like it's still a sandwich. Right, that's exactly. That's the most exactly. annoying part. It's like, that's... It's, it's a, not even like the Scooby-Doo sandwich. It's like, it's beyond that. <laughs> if they would put, put a piece of, meat, of bread every so couple inches, maybe I'd believe it. But. And then be able to squeeze it like accordion style. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Nope. But yeah, so, I mean, that's kind of not going on anymore. 
I hope I hope it gets picked back up. But Phil moved away. He's he's living in uh, Fredonia now. Okay. So it's kind of hard to plan schedules and things like that. Should we take our first caller? To- yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dying to say that. Sorry. <laughs> Here for Jeff in the Falls. I yeah. wish we had a, I wish we had a uh, like a Skype like thing set up that we could like call <laughs> Cl- people. Clay in Buffalo. It's yeah, calling Eric or Doug. Yeah. <laughs> All it is is just guys naked. No, I feel like not that's that. just, not, I, no. Edit that out. I'm now. sorry. That's a uh, chat roulette. That's, not, I was gonna say like, what are you talking about? Skype. Yeah. <laughs> guys naked. <laughs> I didn't know where you're going. Chat roulette. <laughs> Sorry. Guys calling in. I'm naked. <laughs> this guy's calling in to tell you and they're naked. Jump in the balls. Yeah, you're on. Hey, I'm naked. <laughs> this is the 10th guy. <laughs> yeah, that would be a little... God, why are they all naked? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. It's the uh, Negroni okay. talking. Yeah, it's the Negroni. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you don't even know where to go with it. I don't know where to go with that. Should we talk about Negroni? No. Um... <laughs> No, you brought up Buffalo Foodies. I have your bu- your typical mm-hmm. Buffalo Foodie questionnaire here. Oh, let's do it. I was going to ask you the Buffalo Foodie questionnaire. Let's do this. You ready for it? Uh, I'll try. Are you sure? Snaps. Ellie, are you going to answer this too? I'll interject. Great. <clears throat> All right. So, uh, first question. Uh, I should say your Buffalo Foodie is a is a running... Um, yeah, it's a, it's an interview. What, what do you call it? I don't know. It's, it's basically, I, I reach out to people... Uh-huh. Either they're chefs, they're on the news, they're on the radio. Local celebs. Local celebrities or and just people. people in the food cool scene. People. Yeah. yeah, people who I think are doing cool stuff. Uh-huh. And uh, I just ask them where they like to eat, where they like to drink, uh, you know. All right, well, let's go through it. I mean, stuff like that, yeah. It's, it's typically the same questionnaire for everyone. Yeah, right? we've done 87 to date. Right, and they're mostly the same questions. Like it's, it's mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's the whole point. It's a good survey right there. Yeah, it's, it's five, six questions Someday we're going to put this together like statistically, and we're going to have On the hundredth this. one. After the hundredth one, we're yep. doing that. I already started to play around with that. Nice. You like Got some it? standard deviations and stuff? I can't wait. Stat nerds. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so first one, when you aren't working, where do you like to go eat? And I, I'm gonna <laughs> well, say this: this does not include any sort of like blogging. Like, yeah, you're yeah. going to eat just if because you want to eat. If we're off the clock, you're off the clock. Ninos. Allie it's, likes Ninos. Yeah, yeah, she's gonna say Ninos. Um, Shango. Shango is like our our nice place if we're gonna have like a sit down meal and gonna spend a little extra cash. Uh-huh. Ne- uh, Shango is always a safe bet. I'd say the place that we eat at the most are probably. Three places. One is uh, Lloyd, Lloyd Taco. Lloyd. Okay. I, so you'll I will, search them out and yeah, just track yeah. them if down. If they're within a 10 minute drive from our house, Maybe we'd like to Sometimes longer. Yeah. Sometimes 20 minutes. It used I to be longer. Drive a half hour. It's like a drive to Amherst almost. I would drive here. a half hour for them. Wow. Maybe back in the day when they weren't around as much, we would yeah, do that. More, before they sold. No, I'm just kidding. It's, <laughs> it's a lot. Um, Lloyd's are awesome. So, yeah. Uh, Lloyd is probably our, our number one go to place. Uh, Founding Fathers lately. Oh. And they're for food. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Their blue, black, and blue burger is one of my favorite things to order. And like, that's not even drunk. Like, I'll go there at six p.m. And I don't order even. One. I don't even like burgers. I will go out of my way to eat there. So like, they do their own burger. It's fresh meat. You can tell. It's, it's probably not. I don't know if it's probably oh, not. It's, that. Just, <laughs> it's just something's it's good just about. Really it's well put together. Burger. Really good burger. R- r- always uh, well or medium well or medium rare and, and and perfect. They grill the bun. Thick or is it thin? Yeah. Medium, I'd say. Okay. Like, like not, thicker, not, yeah. a little closer to Any sort of thicker. sauce on there or anything? Blue cheese, yeah, man. Blue cheese but they have well. a really good uh, mixture of blue cheese. They don't overdo it. And they don't just put blue cheese crumbles, which I know is probably the more foody thing to do. Uh-huh. But I kind of like the dressing. I don't know why. Okay. It's for me. So, I mean... So, Founding Fathers, Lloyd's, and what's your third? Uh, the other place is probably the pink in their steak sandwich. Yes. Yes. If we can get, <laughs> if we can get more people on board with that... I we love my parents on board. I love converting really? mm-hmm. people. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, Ellie's parents like were super skeptical. Yeah, I was and like, na- just shut up. And naturally, just do you it. would be skeptical of eating yeah. at the pink, right? Exactly. I yeah. mean, it's it's made to look like a shithole. Yeah, and it, I mean, it is. It is kind of a shithole. It's not just looks like it. it right. I mean, it it's is. not like they're trying to be. Like it's like a hipster place trying to be. No, yeah. no. <laughs> or at this point, you know, what? I don't think they're trying, but I don't think they're not. They're not trying to clean either. Not trying. They're to not clean busting out the SOS pads. Yeah. But the the thing about that is is every person who tells me like that they're gonna get sick or anything, I'm like, go there during the day and see the hard dudes that are drinking there and regulars, like the scary dudes who go there like in all the time. If they're getting those people like with food poisoning, like those dudes right. are gonna come back super pissed off. It's a good point. You don't want to piss off these like people. So right. obviously they're not gonna but make you. We've sick. never gotten sick. 
I've I don't never know, been I don't sick. know anyone who's gotten sick off of pink steak I've sandwich. had 40 and to 50 steak it sandwiches. It is a quality steak sandwich. It is it's a like fantastic steak. It's like a big steak. piece of sirloin <laughs> yeah, on, yeah. A, on a nice Costanzo roll yeah, uh-huh. covered in like grilled onions or caramelized onions mm-hmm. uh-huh. yeah. and, a, and a big chunk of cheese on there. It was our there. first meal. It's fantastic. It was our first meal in, in Allentown. Allentown. That's residence. right. Yep. When, when you and I both moved to Allentown, that was that's how we celebrated. Yeah. We went to the pink and had a steak sandwich. Yeah. Yeah. That's the way it should be. So those are my three that I probably go to very often. Uh-huh. Um, if I had my Plus, choice. alcohol kills a lot of things, right? So <laughs> if if you're still skeptical about the pink, just know that alcohol yeah. will kill things. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know. I mean, I've never been somebody who has, like, a favorite anything, like, movie, food, What do you like at Shango? I've, I've been there once, and it was gumbo. many years ago, so I don't really... I, I barely gumbo. remember what they have. The gumbo it's, is... It's, like, New Orleans-based, but uh, the right. gumbo is... Legit. The the gumbo Legit. is like the best gumbo. Ellie and I would both get a large bowl. I would bathe in their gumbo. Yeah, bathe if I could, gumbo. I would okay. bathe in it. Okay. On a daily basis. Yeah, it would be a little expensive, <laughs> but it would be it's an expensive bath. <laughs> but no, I mean, I, I mean that's good. I, but every time I go there, I actually get something different because I'm uh-huh. still making my way through the menu. But I haven't, the I haven't ever eaten anything I don't like. Breakfast specials are fantastic. Yeah, they have like brunch or yeah, they're brunch. Sorry, they're brunch specials. Uh-huh. Where do you like to relax after work or on the weekend to grab a drink? I mean, Founding literally, Fathers. I just said, like, two of the places. Like, Founding <laughs> Fathers and the Pink. So you like to multitask. Yeah. You get the food and I the mean, drink. I would... Those two bars are hands down my favorite bars. What, Founding Fathers and the Pink, did you Yeah, say? yeah. Okay. And I would say Founding Fathers is probably in the lead of my favorite bars. Fa- wh- and Founding Fathers is actually has an awesome beer selection, right? Uh, they have a good bottle selection. Like, decent. Ah, probably, point. like, 20 right, yes. bottles. They, have they only have selection. five taps. Right. And one of them is, is McSorley's, which is just the only beer I ever get there. They have that on tap? Mm-hmm. Oh, nice. Yeah. I like McSorley's. You know what was upsetting when we went to New York City? That the McSorley's tasted almost exactly like... <laughs> because it's not brewed in that restaurant. No, it's, it's brewed, brewed at the same place PBR. wherever Founding Fathers gets it. <clears throat> it's brewed in the PBR. Exactly. Place. At this point, McSorley's is a great bar. You go there for the effect, though. Yeah, yeah. It is the oldest bar in New York. Yeah. Abraham Lincoln drank Abraham there. Abraham Lincoln, Lincoln drank there. <laughs> did you say Abe Lincoln? He did. <laughs> hey, Blinken. But it's good. It's good stuff. It's it's ale, by the way. Don't not beer. Don't yes. don't ever get it twisted. If you go to McSorley's, I feel like the that's overrated. That they'll like kick you out and stuff like that. Yeah, it is. I, I mean, like <laughs> like the old guys act like jerks, but yeah. But I, I'm trying to think of any it's other kind of bars that I really go to. I mean, I like Blue Monk, but I don't think I'd ever drink there a whole night. It's not a regular type it's of expensive. thing. No, right? I'd have it's two beers expensive. and go somewhere else and then spend the rest of the night there. Sure. Um, Makes sense. I used to love Kohl's, like, right when I turned 21. Like, that oh, was my sure. favorite awesome spot. beer selection. Yeah. Great, really good beer selection. Just the worst, like, bar to try to hang out at. Mm. And you're mostly a beer guy when you go out. Yeah. Now I'm getting into cocktails. Like, I love Vera. Mm. Uh, just a really cool atmosphere. Super young, hip crowd. I love it there. I love yeah. it there. And uh, their cocktails are awesome. I mean, if I really I, like what they're doing there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's they're they're setting the the pace for everybody else. I mean, yeah. they're the only people who are doing this. And now, you know, you got Mike Ace at the Lafayette who have a really awesome cocktail bar. Um, Mixology, which I've heard mixed things about, get it? But yeah, I mean, so I guess those would be the bar areas that I like to go. And these are all in the Elmwood Allentown area. Yeah, I mean, it's just that, I mean that's where you are. Yeah, I'm not gonna drive to Williamsville or anything. When, yeah. Well, the pinks across the street. Yeah. That leads us to our next question. If you had friends or family visiting from out of town, where would you take them for a good buffalo time? I don't All of know. the above. Would yeah, you, would I you mean... Would you do pizza and wings? Yeah. Uh, if they weren't from here? Like, if, uh-huh. if they weren't expats, like if they weren't somebody... Yeah. But me and Ellie, we even have different opinions of where we take them for pizza. I think everybody in Buffalo would have different opinions. The, the worst, I hate writing about pizza. That's the one thing I hate. Everyone has their own opinion on pizza. You everyone can't. has their idea of the best pizza in Buffalo. <laughs> yeah. and it's, There's no consensus. It is the and worst conversation. Every corner of has Buffalo a has a pizza, has their own pizzeria. And I honestly, somebody loves that. And the difference between them all is like fractions. Minimal, right? Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I guess we do pizza and wings. Like I, I still think Duff's is the best wings in Buffalo. I'd probably go there. But mm-hmm. I, or if we were going, Tavern. If, yeah, if we're gonna go somewhere where like actual locals are and we're not filled with tourists, like Nine Eleven Tavern in South Buffalo is the joint. Mm. It's super tiny, crazy weird chicken wing sauce, but really good. And the only place that has like a unique sauce that they don't use Frank's. So I'd probably go there. Um, Blasphemy. Yeah. <laughs> probably go to Founding Fathers. 
Uh, I might, may, if we weren't even going to go there, I'd maybe drive out to East Aurora and oh, go to uh, Barbell. Barbell. Barbell, yeah. Barbell's just a, you can knock out both. You can get really good wings and a really good beef on work mm-hmm. and, and do them both in one shot. Okay. Um, and also, it's just, I like East Aurora. It's pretty out there. I know it's blasphemous to say that you like the suburbs. But East Aurora is the best. No, it's, it's really cool out there. The best yeah, town but like, I don't know. You, ever. People like love Elmwood and Allen, and they like think that anything outside of that is evil. Okay. But I, where, I like where do you stand on that fight on that debate? You as I've gotten older, I've, ring? as I've gotten older, I enjoy the suburbs more for what they are. So you grew up in the suburbs, couldn't wait to get out, yeah. go to the city, enjoy everything that's Allen and Elmwood, yeah. But also grow an appreciation for the suburbs, yeah, exactly. Quietness and uh, I don't know. I don't know. It, it's just weird. There's a lot of quality things out Settling there. down and stuff like that, if I'm not going to be drinking till 3 a.m. Yeah. on the weekend, like, might as well just live in, like, a little quiet area. But Have whatever. some space. Yeah. Have, I got a dog. I, I want to have a backyard. <laughs> you have a dog. Sure. Yeah. But, um... Li- I think I would take people to Liberty Hound now. Really? Where's that? It's what? a new restaurant on the waterfront. What's it called? Liberty... Liberty Hound. I think it's a cool place to I mean, take it's not, somebody. like, amazing, but I think it's cool because they can walk around the Naval Park, they can look at the water. It's all nice down there. It is a cool place They can place walk down to, to the harbor. Yeah. It would even be cooler harbor. if we took, like, if you went to, like, a concert, like, Thursday at the yeah. harbor, and then, and then went go, there to, dr- or to drink Or walk over to the food trucks or something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, I, yeah, the th- the food truck party that's at the square. I mean, that's cool. Although we've never actually been to it. But. Wait, what's, what's going on with that? <clears throat> After the harbor... A couple of the food trucks set up on Mississippi, yeah, like the Cobblestone oh, so District. Is, so it's not after Thursday in the Square. This is the new Harbor. Well, it's it's Thursday series. Square. There's no, no there's, there's no Square anymore. It's all oh, the, the Harbor. Gone? It's all at the Harbor. Yeah, cool. it's fancier. Okay, get well, with it. Thursday expat, at the Harbor. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so I mean, it, Liberty Hounds is a cool place to hang out, and you're on the waterfront. You're on the. Uh, I mean, that's just it's really cool. You got you know warships that are uh-huh. in your background, and I mean you can like. The food trucks are right there. You can listen. Well, they're over at Cobblestone. No, they're they're past the the arena. arena. Oh, okay. I mean that that's cool. Whatever. I uh, I mean, as far as like uh, you know, I mean, we have like cool museums and stuff like that, but none of that interests me. Like, I've been to the art museum. I've been to the science museum. I think they're cool, but like, I don't think I'd want to go back and show somebody those. I'd Mm -hmm. just send them there and be like, "Yo, check it out." Right. I'll meet you after. Hey, go see that museum. (laughs) I'll be at the pink. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go to the Knox Gallery and the Science Museum and all that stuff, and and then we'll talk later when you get out of it. How about Niagara Falls? Oh, Albert. Albert Knox Knox Gallery. I'm sorry. (laughs) The Falls. What? Again, I would take him to the Canadian side. Sorry. Yeah, the Canadian side is the place to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We all. I think everyone knows that. Yeah, everyone knows that. Um. What are some food memories you have from your childhood? I, th- I mean, you talked about a lot of them. Yeah, being kind of a picky eater. I mean, I mean, the only cool thing is I remember watching cooking shows with my mom, uh-huh. and not even wanting to eat it, but just thinking it was cool watching these chefs. Like, like the one I forgot his name, but he would like chop like carrots and vegetables like super quick, and I thought it was like the craziest thing. Oh, I used to love watching stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when I, when my first job, I was working at a restaurant, so I tried to like cut potatoes like that. Except how, I had no how idea. How fast how to, did you cut yourself? I, I, I sliced off half my thumb. <laughs> I destroyed my thumb. Was that like the first day? I mean, it was like just like wildly flailing this knife around, thinking, I'm like, that's how they do it, right? It's just, it's just half my thumb was all of a sudden gone. And like, there's that moment before it starts bleeding, but you can see the skin separated. Mm-hmm. You're like, oh, this is going to suck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, that's probably the earliest, like, cool memory I have. I mean, otherwise it's just me complaining about food that was on my plate. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, oh, this is great. What would you like to see more of in Buffalo's restaurant scene? Soup dumplings. I mean, soup dumplings, <laughs> hands down. Dim sum. Dim sum? Soup uh, dim sum. I mean, I feel bad, like... Do you want to explain what a soup dumpling is for those... It's a uh, it dumpling heaven, that's filled with soup. So it's actually, when you bite into it, it is like soup broth pours out. Like you can drink it out of the, the dumpling. Yeah, that's awesome. It is awesome. <laughs> and uh, I would love to see stuff like that. But you know what? I We say dim sum and there was a dim sum place yeah. and we never went. But there's not a... I know. That's horrible. <laughs> I was, mean, it used not, to be... The, it's the, not... There's not a lot of accessible... There wasn't, it wasn't accessible to us. It yeah. was farther out. Like, I want what dim sum in the city. So, would you, the, generally speaking, would you say Chinese food? Like, not take out yeah. Chinese food? Like, Americanized take out Chinese? Like, I would like to see cool cha- Chinese, but then... I, I mean, know there's that a there's, lot of them. I there's know that there's Chinese Asian. restaurants out there that have really awesome... Uh, homestyle. Tra- homestyle menus. Here? Yeah. Uh-huh. And I just, you know, I haven't had a chance. I, they're out in, like, Tonawanda and stuff, right. and, like, uh, when the hell am I ever in Tonawanda? 
Yeah, like okay. never. I'm never in Tonawanda. Sure. <laughs> But I mean, I you know the 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 hip thing used to be Ethiopian, and there's gonna be three Ethiopian restaurants in the next like three months. One of VPN, Here? really? <laughs> there's oh, one already open. And there's two coming. Two, I mean, I want a VPN pizzeria? <clears throat> a v- yeah, a v- yeah. Alan Badenko would be proud. A VPN <laughs> style pizzeria. And what's like VPN? A, uh, verified pizza. Not Napoleon. in Italian. I mean, na- na- oh, what does it mean? Uh, just cooked a pizza that's cooked in like an 850 degree oven. So it's like to the sp- certain sp- specifications. Yeah, that yeah. Make it uh, yeah. Official San Marzano Neapolitan pizza. True Neapolitan Buffalo pizza. mozzarella, San right. Marzano tomatoes, and double O flour. Yeah, cooked uh, in a crust almost 900 degree oven. Yeah, yeah like whatever the specs are, yeah, they yeah. make it a true official yeah. Neapolitan uh, pizza. You know what? Rocco's is trying it, and we had it only once, and it was not good. And we've heard that it goes between it's not, bad it's and not, okay. It's but not, it's not what what we for. had in New York City, like, and what we had in Toronto, just blows it away. Yeah. So, so I'd love to. See, yeah, I'd love to see that. So, um, I. You know what? Uh, more like late night dining options that totally agree aren't that aren't gyms. super greasy that aren't gyms and, or and stuff like that. Yes, I absolutely agree. No, I, I don't want. I don't out. want diner. I don't want to go to the town. No, because uh-huh. and I don't want to go to gym steakhouse restaurants. Yeah, yeah. I would like maybe like a good. Um, like what? I kind of what Cantina Loco is doing, I guess. But like later, I, I think they like, like close a Mexican at 11. place. That's... Yeah, like a, a good like fresh Mexican place. I guess Lloyd does that. But like know. one that's open every night, like. and one that has maybe a bigger menu. Lloyd's awesome, but they have four things. Like I want sometimes I want more. Okay, but uh, I mean that's probably the biggest thing. But I'm we're I mean we're late people. Like I'm up to like three a.m. on the weekends. Like that that's I'm not the normal person, I guess. But um. I don't know. I, I, more artisanal things. Like, more people who are just opening a shop to do, like, one thing. Like, I, I love... I would love a pie shop. You and your pie shop. Um, there's, like the dessert? Yeah. Like, just There's six to pie. places that are basically cupcake-only shops. Oh. I would, me, a, I would love a... I would love a pie love shop. It. Like, a place that's just dedicated to making really awesome pies. Okay. Someone get out. I don't know. I just want people who are like into a thing and do it really, really well. Right. And like that's all that. And, and just a little shop. In your one and thing. that's all it is. Yeah. More noodles. More like type like uh, Chinese and Asian like noodle. Hand pulled no- or hand yeah. peeled noodle type. Yeah. Of we, I mean, we have a ramen place like that just mm-hmm. opened last year. I would love more of that. Mm. I don't know. I, I mean, whatever. I bow. more just more choices. Some bao. Some yeah, bops. a bao. Oh. Some bao me. A, a really good bami and uh, a bow. good bao sandwiches, which I'll post links to what the hell these are. But if anyone read my New York City well, article, a bao, uh, real quick is is what like Truth. you're saying a pork bun on that like yeah. Chinese roll, exactly. yeah, yeah, or, yeah. And if people had noticed, are we? It's kind of doughy. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean something like that. Uh huh. And and bao mi is the Vietnamese sandwich on a French baguette. <sighs> yes, exactly. Yeah. Thank you for filling in the the audience. Whoever is still listening an hour into this. Well, it's a cut. I'm sure this will be cut down a little bit. Yeah, we're going to do some editing to this. Also, this is going to be our 30th episode. So, so it's going to be a little longer. So, yeah, this is going to go out uh, in a couple weeks. All right, when do we talk about me? This is the- <laughs> <laughs> let's get to... This is all warm up. Now let's talk about... Do you have some no, questions from your, from your um, fans? No. No, actually, no fan wrote uh, any you questions. You guys are terrible. <laughs> yeah. I'm a fan of my fans. What about Zemgis the foodies Gergensen? that had questions? What's that? Your foodies that had questions. Though. Yeah, that's what I meant. <laughs> yeah, no, no. I'm. Yeah, I mean, Krista uh, Seichu, who's basically been a mentor for us, uh, sent us some questions. And uh, Pete from Lloyd. Krista, I'm sorry we, we waited so long to get to him. Uh, first question, if you had your druthers, what would be the future of BuffaloEats.org? In the, in, the in the perfect world, Buffalo Eats would be my paid. full-time gig. I would be writing... 10 posts a day covering new restaurants that are opening, taking like pictures of yeah. every new thing. Like it would be like literally your one stop shop for all news regarding restaurants in the area. Like that would be the dream. But until I win the lottery or people want to pay me, you know, $40,000 a year to us, in ads to please <laughs> email to Buffalo this. Eats at gmail. <laughs> yeah, there it is. That's the number he needs. Just get him, <laughs> get him the 40. <laughs> Start a, uh, a, yeah. a marathon, not a marathon, a, like a telethon. Yeah, that's the number I can start justifying. I, I mean, I would love to do this full time. I, I, I enjoy meeting all these people and stuff, but yeah, there's no way. Um, 
Also, Chris, so your questions are way better than anything I had. I should, we should have started with this. If you had to do it all over again, what would you do differently? Druthers means choice. Thank you. I uh, <laughs> I that probably that would have... Wikipedia that. The first... If you had your druthers and you could do it all over again, <laughs> what would you do differently? The first year, I, uh, I probably would have took it more seriously knowing that people would be reading yeah, it. Yeah, some of those earlier posts are embarrassing. They're very embarrassing. The pictures are horrible. If, if the I could go back, bad. I would delete I think so we many I of think those we should pictures. still delete them. I, yeah. Just, I realized, like, at the time, like, I thought no one was ever going to read it, so I just didn't well, care. Well, no one was reading it in the beginning, so it didn't exactly. matter. Exactly. But, uh, I don't know. Trying to set a tone right from the beginning, like a serious profession. I, not serious, but a, a professional tone. I guess I don't know. Just put more effort into it, and maybe bring a damn camera with us to dark restaurants. Those pictures are so bad. Yeah, the candlelight doesn't do it, right? No, no. Especially really the early picture. iPhones. <clears throat> those those cameras weren't that great. Ancient. It's amazing how far the iPhone has gone. <laughs> I uh, honestly, the 4S and even the 4 have changed the quality of our pictures dramatically. It was a huge jump, though. Like, yeah. We take also, it for granted Instagram. Now, but from the, the 3G and the 3GS. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there was a significant jump in camera quality. Yeah. What are the benefits of running the blog that you did not anticipate, beca- besides occasional free food? Um, Meeting cool All the people. great people you met? Yeah, honestly, like, everybody that we've met that, like, I, I've always admired what they're doing or, or, you know, what they're cooking and... <laughs> Now that I know some of these people on a first name basis, and that's that's just stupid. I, I just I still don't understand how that's happened. Yeah, you're hanging out with a lot of cool local chefs. Yeah, um, the guys that are doing great things in Buffalo. Yeah, you got Mike A. You got guys that have been. I mean, Mike was is James Beard Award nominated, right? Yeah, and he's um, he's cooked three James Beard dinners. That's incredible. And then yeah. you have. Um, who's who's your buddy in Chautauqua at the Chautauqua Oh Ross Chautauqua. Warhol, who's who's, who's worked, at worked at Albuli and Albuli. the French Laundry and all those. Yeah, I mean places. these are like world class chefs. I mean, yeah, they, I mean it's you've got invited to like special events where they've cooked for you and yeah, and you know most other. Uh, I mean it's awesome. It's it's kind of it's kind of weird like trying to uh, write objective things about their food, knowing these people on a first hand basis and like knowing them by name. But, uh, I mean, we don't really take a super journal, journalism, journalistic approach to what we do, so... Uh-huh. They, kinda, don't, they don't follow the rules of Yeah, so we kind of get around that that way, but uh, it's just awesome to meet these people. I mean, not only are they super talented, but, like, honestly, everybody who's come down here for a podcast has been super nice and super, you know, supportive of what we've done and, and literally are doing us favors by coming down here and doing this, so everybody yeah. we've met has just been awesome. That's great. Yeah. And a lot of fun, I'm sure. Yeah, I mean, I've made, like, legit friends. I mean, people from Buffalo.com and the guys at Buffalo Blog. And, I mean, these are people I would actually, you know, hang out with just to drink and chill. Like, they just become friends now. So, it's been really cool. Awesome. Um, Chris's next question is, what kind of food websites or blogs does Buffalo still need? More, I mean, more restaurants. More? Yeah, more blogs. I mean... W- we are literally... Why? Be- you need to cover more restaurants? Yeah. I mean, I would love to see, re- like, blogs that are focused on certain areas. Like, I would love to see a North Towns food blog or a South Towns. Like, cause we, we can't keep track of, like, all of Western New York. <laughs> like, there's just too much out there. And I would love to see just more blogs in general. I mean, we're the only people doing it right now. Hmm. And maybe a year ago, there was three. And so... I don't know. I, the, just people need people to be doing come it. in and out of this a lot, right? Yeah, and they the, start off as a hobby. Y- Yelp has like super skyrocketed in popularity over the last year, and and I like Yelp a lot, but like it's a. I mean, people are just doing that instead of starting blogs, which is I guess good and bad. I don't know. It makes sense, yeah. But yeah. Um, if you had to dine at only one Buffalo restaurant every night for the rest of your life, where would it be? Lloyd. <laughs> Oh, he says no. Lloyd's. If Lloyd could could promise me churros and crazy corn in their menu, I, I could probably eat there for a month. Corn. Okay, we need some churros back on the menu. L- I mean, Lloyd is one of those. No, churros. I probably couldn't eat there for the rest of my life, though. Sorry, I, it would be close. It's probably the closest Seabar. restaurant. Seabar, yeah. Uh, just so there's so much on that menu, and it's all amazing. Yeah, I right, well, I'm glad you said those. Uh, Kristen notes if you said Jim steak out, she <laughs> might no. kill you. Yeah. So I'm glad you did not say Jim's. I did not say that. Yeah. 
Should we should we do? Uh, P had a really good question. Should we do that real quick? Yeah, yeah. Let's do that. And then he let's says, wrap it up. Uh, "What keeps you going? What drives you to do this? Considering you're not full time in the food industry." If we hadn't started meeting all the people that we've we've met and occasionally get invited to really cool events, this, this probably would have been would've, done a year ago. This probably would have ended a year ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, we literally don't make any money. We are going out to eat because we would normally go out to eat, I guess, and we're just happy to to bring our phones and take notes and things like that. But occasionally we kind of force ourselves to try new restaurants when maybe we really don't want to. And that started getting old probably at the end of last year. Uh, but I mean like the fact that our, our viewership has doubled every year since we've done this or readership, I guess you could say. And like, like you, like the, the, the three times that I've gotten recognized (laughs) <laughs> in in a public area where somebody came up to me and said that they really liked the website and things like that, like each one of those times, like uh, gave me enough self esteem boost to do it for like another six months. Can you tell us that story? Like, what, what <laughs> How did somebody recognize you outside of? Uh, when was it the Sabres? When was at a Sabres game? We were in line. I think we were. You were with us, or you, you were there. Yeah, with your cousins. We but yeah, we were, we were just in line for the beef on work. And at the Odd Club? Yeah, at the Odd yeah. Club. And I was just standing there, that. and a guy came up to me and, like, tapped me on the shoulder. And he's like, hey, I just want to say, like, I, I read your blog all the time, and I really like the videos you do with Buffalo.com. My my vet. Like, yeah. Dr. Claus at Thorn Avenue Animal Hospital. Loves the blog. He said <laughs> that to me out of the blue when I brought Marty in. Yeah. Wow. That's pretty awesome. I was like, yeah, yeah okay. Um, How's Marty? I was in line for a Lloyd taco truck. And somebody turned around and were like, "Hey, Donnie, you run a uh, your Buffalo Eats, right?" Was that Chaz? No, that was uh, this was like he did a woman. That too, yeah, he did that. Uh, and then the most recent time was we got a twofer. Uh, oh, yeah. We were going to eat at the ramen place, and when we walked in, um, the the hostess. Uh, Host. Host, I guess you should say. Uh, he said... Uh, <laughs> Hostess. Should, especially he. if it was a male. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He said uh, that he loved our Hungry Hungry Buffalo videos, and that he watched all of them, and he thought they were awesome. And yeah. then as we sat down, okay. I got a tweet saying, uh, <laughs> I recognize your voice, I'm sitting in the restaurant, and uh, I love your podcast. And uh, I turned around, and like there's this dude sitting there, and he was like a huge fan. <laughs> <laughs> of the podcast. His name's Derek. I've actually talked to him on Twitter a couple times. But uh it was just like literally it was like five minutes apart and it was like just like that kind of stuff, like I can't believe like anyone would ever recognize me or tell me that they enjoy it. And and I I like uh hearing from like my friends' friends. Like Tommy has friends who are like who didn't realize that he was my brother and that like like he like oh, they, so they knew of your blog, They knew of Buffalo they Eats, but they didn't know like it was Tommy was your brother. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and I've heard that from my mom and things like yeah. that. Coworkers that she has that like they love the blog and they read a lot, and uh, they then they find out like, you know, I'm her son, like that kind of stuff. I think is crazy, and I can't. I mean, we get it's cray. It is. I mean, we have four thousand Twitter followers, and I I always think that like eighty nine percent of those <laughs> are just bots. porn, just porn spam oh. bots. But no, I, I don't know. I so uh, that kind of stuff. What, keeps is me it going. that way? Is it ninety percent? No. no. So you have, uh, out of the 4,000... He just likes to pretend it is. You, you, most of them are pretty, you know, they're quality followers, right? They're, I think yeah. so. I mean, we don't get, like, 4,000 replies to everything we post, but, I mean, when we laugh. did our we, Twitter contest, it was in the hundreds that we were getting replies. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know. I it, Twitter's hard, like, to just, like, to uh, judge how many people are actually caring or still using Twitter. Like, they could follow me four years ago and then just never sign back on. Like, I have no idea if they're really there. But... I don't know. It's I mean it's it's just that kind of stuff like it keeps me going that people actually read it and care about it and and think it's interesting. That's right. Yeah. So I guess that's what keeps me going. And I'm the fact that. that we get to meet and eat really good things. Like eat meet cool people and and eat really really awesome meals. We're well, doing an awesome job. Thanks, buddy. And uh yeah. it's it's been fun watching watching this grow.